You see this? This is no ordinary coffee. This is the coffee of a fifth Don. This is fifth Don coffee. This past Saturday, I tested for my fifth Don black belt, which honestly, what a ride. And I don't wanna sit here and talk too much because I know you guys wanna to get to the test, but there's some backstory you need to know here. First off, this test took me completely by surprise. I had no idea that I would even be testing this year, especially with everything going on with the world, but um, my instructor called me up and said, hey, you're due to test, you're ready. Um, be ready to go in about a month. So I had a month to get myself together and at the same time I was having the busiest month of my life. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a full-time college student currently studying psychology. I have my own business, I do real estate, and I also had to get my student ready for his first on test which happened which was scheduled for the Saturday prior to my test. Honestly, I don't think I would have had it any other way. I think it was just the kick in the butt that I needed to like really start like prioritizing my own health and training again. So I got to work and I really, most of my hardcore training came literally the week before testing because that was the only week I had where I wasn't bombarded with a bunch of other stuff. So that's where I pretty much every day made sure that I got on the floor and I would spend a couple hours, you know, really going through everything. My training this year, to say the least, has been sporadic. And when I do train, I haven't been doing a lot of traditional Taekwondo like Pumse. I've been just kind of, you know, doing my own kind of I don't wanna call it signature stuff, but like stuff like that, like stuff that, you know, is more artistic and fun for me. <laughs> so I really had to switch my gears and, you know, get my mind into the right place. Most of you have probably never seen a fifth on test before. And I mean, all schools have their different requirements, but the way that it was explained to me, once you get to these higher ranks, it's less about what you can do and more about who you are and how you're moving the martial art forward. Now, because I'm 24, which is extremely young to be a fifth don, that's a lot of rank for someone my age. Uh, I'm still expected to be an athlete. I'm expected to still excel in the athletic performance department. So basically, I was told that I need to pick out four Pumse. I need to choreograph something that kind of shows some of my more unique skills. I need to put together a board break and then be ready to answer a bunch of questions about my training, how I'm moving the art forward, what I do and whatnot. So. Uh, that's what I did. So the test actually didn't start off on the best foot. As I was warming up, I was throwing vertical kicks because I'm very much the kind of person where if I have something to do, if I'm put on the spot and there's people watching me, I'm going to give 110% and I'm going to go to my maximum capability, even if it's maybe a little bit risky. That's just who I've always been. I don't know how to half do something. I always have to go fully into it. So I was throwing verticals during the warm up, and I just felt something like kind of pop in <laughs> my uh, ground leg when, so like, you know, I'm throwing the kick and then the ground leg, there was something that popped and it was pretty painful. I had noticed it was feeling a little bit weird. So I rested it for a couple days, hoping that that would fix the issue. It didn't, but no one saw anything. No one saw that pain or whatever. So I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want any sympathy points. I didn't want them to lower the bar for the test or anything like that. So I just said, okay, now I'm doing my fifth on test uh, crippled. So. <laughs> so when you watch this test, I want you to keep in mind that every kick that I threw in this test caused a lot of pain. So if you're wondering why my leg isn't like sh completely vertical, that's why. But um, I think I played it off good. No one knew until the end of the test when I said, hey, by the way, I screwed up my leg and everyone was like, what? <laughs> So the test started off by just throwing some basic kicks. They wanted to see my basics and make sure that I was strong in those. They didn't call them out. They said, you're a master, you know what the basics are. Just do, you know, rows of basics. And if we want to see anything further, we will let you know. So that's how the test started.
So due to the pandemic, I haven't really had access to kicking any kind of targets. Like I don't have a bag or anything like that at my house. So I've been having to practice, you know, kicking in the air. So Master White, who was one of the people on the test board and the person whose school was hosting the test, wanted to kind of check that I can hit a target and hit a target well. So he really just wanted to see roundhouse kicks on the paddle and make sure that I was, you know, actually able to hit something and pick a target and be able to uh, hit it with some precision. Next up was my creative routine. Now I want you guys to keep in mind, I put together this entire routine in one week and with my legs screwed up, like this was probably the hardest part of the test because you know, the idea was to show off a lot of my more unique kicking ability. So it was really painful and then you guys will never guess. So. During my training that week, I did an aerial because that was part of the routine and I tweaked something in my back and I felt it and it hurt. So I rested it for a couple days saying like, okay, like stay off of it, don't do anything. So then when I did the aerial in the creative Pumse, I literally like, <laughs> it hurt all over again and like just the entire left side of like my back just like, had such excruciating pain. So now <laughs> for the rest of the test, I was fighting with a pulled hamstring and <laughs> a screwed up back. Like I think I like actually threw my back out at 24, which uh, is fine, I guess. That being said, I don't think anyone noticed. I played it off and I just kept going. Like nothing ever happened, which you'll see. But yeah, so now, you know, we're like 10, 20 minutes into the test and I'm already battling two injuries. After my creative routine, it was time for traditional Pumse, which is usually something I excel at, but I hadn't done it in so long. But you'll see as I progress, like each Pumse gets, you know, better, the rhythm's better, I set into things a little bit better. Pyong Wan was definitely, I think, the worst one just because like I felt a lot of like pressure to like really like perform because I didn't want people to know that I was injured. So I just felt the need to like go for it full on instead of, you know, making sure that my timing was good, making sure that I was relaxed and then I snapped into my movements. But with each form, you'll see how I progressively got more comfortable and was able to kind of, you know, snap more, land my hands and feet at the same time, be loose and have good timing.
So then they threw a big curveball at me, Master Deb, who is the wife of Master White, who also helps run, who owns the school with him. She comes to me with a blindfold and says, here you go. And then Master White said, asked me what form I feel like is just second nature to me that I can do in my sleep. And I picked Corgo and they said, great. They faced me diagonally because if you don't know about Taekwondo Pumse, it's like pretty much until you get to the eighth on form, all uh, horizontal or vertical lines. So they had me face diagonal and then they put a blindfold on me and they said, okay, now do the pumse and you know, make sure you don't get all wonky. It was my first time ever doing that. I had never done a pumse blindfolded in my life, but I actually, there was something that I liked about it, if that makes sense. And um, they said that I did the best out of any student that's ever come in the door. I was a little bit offline, but it was just one movement. It was the second single uh, knife and choreo. My stepping was just off and that threw me off a little bit, but my line stayed thorough throughout were the comments that were made, so. Not too bad if I do say so myself. <laughs> Before you begin, think about this. It's totally different. Try to resume and find your same starting spot as close as you can in that line. Try to find that line. Sir. Go! Okay, next it was time for board breaking. Now, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to board breaking. You'll see a lot of black belts use the demo boards and some people have like a problem with that for some reason. The idea with demo boards is that, you know, the technique is more advanced and, you know, if you break the demo board and it just like kind of barely breaks, like then you have serious issues. You know, just because the board is thinner, the idea is to make it look like you just kicked through a hundred boards. So whenever people are like, oh, now do that through a one inch, you can clearly tell through, like by looking at the kicks that I could have done it through a one inch, but the idea is that it's just a demo board. You just snap and due to COVID, I wasn't allowed to have like a ton of holders. So I only had one. So I used demo board so that they could just, you know, pop them up and move because when you have the thicker boards, you have to kind of and um, brace them a tad more. So that's why I use demo boards. I don't feel bad about it at all. I mean, you'll see in the clip clearly, like I would could go through a one inch board if I wanted to. <laughs> I hadn't done a board break since probably like my fourth on test, which was four years prior. So uh, I was a little bit nervous. I didn't practice it one time because I didn't have the opportunity to. So it really was about just setting the board where I wanted to and making it happen.
sharp. I'll catch him again. Go, come on. Stay there. Okay, then they threw another curveball at me and they made me do the knife form, which is known as Dandahan. I don't know if any of you guys know of that form. Not a lot of schools do it anymore, but when you, when I was a color bell or when all my friends and I were color bells, like we were so excited to be able to do the knife form. And it's just kind of a tradition that we do it for our first on test. And I hadn't performed it myself since my first on test, which I think happened when I was 12 years old and I'm 24 now, so half my life ago. Um, um, but I still managed to pull it out like I can't believe I still remembered it but that just goes to show like muscle memory is a thing because like I don't think I missed a beat Taya! Then was my personal favorite part of the test, and it's what I was told this test was really about. It was time for questions, comments, and answers from the test board. And they asked me a lot of questions. I'm not gonna put everything in here because a lot of the questions you know, wouldn't really bring any value to you. They were questions that were kind of based around like the people in the room and whatnot. But I do want to show you some highlights of some of the questions that I think will really give you an insight of why I train, why I do what I do, and um, hopefully you can get some inspiration from that. Earning a fifth degree black belt is more than a demonstration of high level kicking and home safe skills. The right demands are to hold or propagate the art. Would you explain to the test board how you are and or intend to accomplish this? In other words, can you tell us about your online business and its mission? For me, martial arts has always been about the people. You know, it's the one place for me that kind of feels reminiscent of how I grew up, which was I grew up with interracial parents, you know, uh, in the LGBT community. You know, in Taekwondo, we all come together from different backgrounds, different um, walks of life, and we all come together and we, and we train for one purpose. We all have different beliefs, and even on a world stage, you go to tournaments and there's people from, I think at the US Open I went to a couple years ago, there were 87 countries, yes. something like that, and we may not speak the same language, but we all know what a down block is, we all know what a sidekick is, and we're all here to push each other to be the best athletes we can be. In my childhood, I wasn't Mr. Taekwondo, but at around 16, I started taking it seriously and Mass Jam started working. And then when I turned 18, and I started uh, posting progress photos and videos on my Instagram just to kind of track my progress. And as I progressed, people started following me and saying that they were kind of into what I was doing and they started requesting tutorials. So I created a YouTube channel in which I started teaching tutorials and that grew into kind of finding my life's purpose. This isn't just about teaching people to kick and punch, but it's to create a platform where anyone from any walk of life can feel welcome. My online business is really about that, and what I hope to do for the rest of my life is create many platforms that make people feel the same acceptance and welcoming feeling that I felt whenever I walk into a dojo. What's the difference for you from gliding from first and black belt master what feels different uh well master dan or master dan always says it best when you get your first on you just graduated high school and now you go to college and you gotta specialize in something but then you know once you get to fourth or you know master rank you it becomes less about you and more about the future of taekwondo so even though i'm 24 i 
put my students well before myself. And I, big part of why I train is to be a good role model for my students. When we first started competing on the big uh, mats, I remember my son and I had our conversation that, you know, this kid doesn't know how big he is because you were very, like, humble or, you know, you were like, it was, it's amazing to see you thought you were that good and you, you can embrace that and share it instead of embracing it and only telling people that are as good as you because there are some people that that don't want to home, you know, share their skills, they want to keep it to themselves and only share it amongst those and it's like you have this inviting spirit that wants everybody else to kind of to, to emulate you, you know, to say, wow, you worked so hard to get there, but you're so humble. It's nice to see that growth that this kid who is like so, to me, you know, like he's very closed off, just blossom, this outspoken person. Whatever you think of Donovan's forms today, um, you can put that on him. Because uh, it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago he said, can I come over? And we didn't have the space to go on the place. And um, he said, can you look at my forms? And I said, no. And uh, I said, you're testing for master. Can you show us what you've got? You know, I, I don't want to spoon feed you for this one right here. And then the test board got together, they discussed what they saw, and they decided that I was worthy of receiving the fifth Don, and I got my belt. Yes, sir. I also received my first, second, third, and fourth Kukiwan certificates, which are right here in this folder. I'm actually a Kukiwan fourth Don, and that's not because, you know, I'm not, you know, I can't get it from the Kukiwan, but I actually didn't get my first Don Kukiwan when I originally tested because I never in a million years thought that Taekwondo would become my whole life. So I'm kind of playing catch up. So I think in like six months or something like that, I'll be able to pay the money to receive my fifth Don certificate. But technically under Kukiwan terms, like I received my fourth Don certificate. This is what it looks like. And um, these are like really beautiful and Master White paid to um, get this like really nice display folder, which like I really appreciate. There's something about receiving, you know, a Kookie Wong certificate that like, I don't know, like that made it really real for me. Like, you know, I actually just felt, I don't know, it just like, it made everything real to me. It made me feel like I had really accomplished something. And then it was time for the tea ceremony. I'm going to be honest, I don't know the full history of the tea ceremony, so if you do, feel free to correct me or anything like that. But I know it's a typically a Japanese tradition, which is interesting. Um, but basically, you know, it's a time where, you know, you can celebrate an individual or it's a time where you can really get to know somebody. It's, it's kind of like a, a place it's something you do, like I know it a lot of times in like old culture, I was reading about it before I filmed the video and it said that like it was a place where everyone was equal, like samurai were not able to bring their swords, which was one of the few places they weren't allowed to. So it was like you were free of, you know, discrimination within that sacred um, place where the tea ceremony was being held. And also it can be used to celebrate and admit somebody like into a, you know, like a family, like a group or something like that. So, and when it comes to martial arts, it's usually used for black belt tests. Now, you know, I don't know how, what I don't know is how it got transferred over from being like real tea to being sake. I've been told before, but I, I can't remember. So if you know, let me know down in the comments below. But basically I had to take a shot for each rank that I received. So that was five in total. <laughs> and um, you know, that I was trained for. That was the thing I was the most trained for on the test. <laughs> Everybody. 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 Good trade.
Everybody clapped and I received my fifth don and here it is here is my fifth don black belt thank god you know we love a new accessory <laughs> but um it really is it has become very real for me I will say I wasn't really that um I didn't really understand the importance of getting a fifth don I was like well I got my fourth so I got the rank of master like fifth is just another stripe but now that I've received it like it's I'm really, it's a lot of rank, especially for someone my age, like to have five stripes, that's a lot of years, a lot of dedication, a lot of practice. And it went from being something that I wasn't so sure the um, how important it was to being my favorite test that I probably had despite the injuries and everything, because I really, I feel like I really got to show people who I was as a martial artist rather than just showing people that I can throw my leg up in the air, which is often where a lot of my um, problems with doing martial arts all the time comes from is that sometimes I feel like my worth is only that my leg can go up in the air and it was a reminder that like you no know, like it's so much more than that like that's just part of it like that may bring people in but people stay because my mission is to bring light to the world and create platforms of acceptance and love for all so um, my fifth on test really allowed me to realize that remember that and you know give myself an opportunity to celebrate all the years that i've put into this because i don't celebrate that enough i don't really give myself too many pats on the back so it was nice to just be recognized for not only being a good martial artist but for being a good human being so in terms of fifth don a lot of schools will have their own like kind of certificate so this was signed by three grandmasters saying that i am certified uh, for fifth dawn so basically like in America like you know I would be a fifth dawn locally and stuff like that but once I get my fifth on kooky one that would certify me internationally and you know that's what you would use when you're doing you know big world competitions and stuff like that I want to take this opportunity to say thank you so much to everyone who's watching this right now and who supports my content you know this has put a lot of things in perspective for me and really reminded me why I do what I do and I've never been more inspired to, you know, push myself to my limit and become the best athlete I've ever been, be get in the best shape I've ever been, kick the best that I ever have, and also dive into some new things. So in terms of what's next, obviously I'm going to stick to my Taekwondo roots, but I really, really have wanted to get into Wushu lately, and I'm trying to find a really good instructor in my area, and I'm having a little bit of difficulty. But for me, martial arts, for me is about creative expression. It's using your body to tell a story. And of course there's a self-defense and fighting aspect of that. And you know, I'm confident in my abilities in that way. But the thing that keeps me glued to martial arts is the freedom that I feel when I can use these different movements to express myself. And when I watch things like Wushu and stuff like that, I just think it's so beautiful. It's like just art in its purest form and I really want to um, like learn how to move my body like that. It's completely different from Taekwondo which is very much you know sharp, it's smooth and sharp. You know Wushu looks like water if that makes sense. It's just like it's like water and air. You just like are flowing and it just looks so free. So in terms of my training that's what you can expect. In terms of my channel, you can of course expect, you know, some more tips, tutorials, but also I want to do more like Taekwondo or martial arts vlogs, just sharing my journey because I think that's how people feel inspired. Humans are inspired through storytelling and I want to share my story, share my training, share my thoughts, my perspective, my opinions, 
and um, you know, keep us connected through martial arts, but also just through our spirit, our determination and our drive. So I wanted to take my time and let you know that I'm so thankful to every single person who has bought my course, watched my videos, follows me on Instagram, any supports me in any way. It means the world. I want to thank my family for getting me into martial arts and you know, making sure that I got my first on when I wanted to quit. Imagine how, if I had quit. And I want to thank all of my instructors for training me. Anyone who had a hand in my training, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all of the athletes that I've had the privilege to train next to, all of the people from my school for pushing me, believing in me, coaching me. And um, I want to thank all of you guys for being a part of my journey. I would not be able to make martial arts my life if it weren't for you. So yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all those other things at Donovan Barrett. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.